Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions that you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today I wanna to talk about the requirements around emergency responder communication enhancement systems in NFPA 1, the fire code. So we're gonna go in our dashboard here, we're gonna to go to NFPA 1, 2024 edition we're going to go right into the requirements which are in chapter 11 um, the emergency responder communication enhancement systems are considered a building service so we're going to go right into 1110 so here's the section here with the requirements i'm going to go right into 11102 and this section is a, it's a change from last year or the last edition, the 2021 edition. We're gonna take a look at the changes real quick. If we look back um, to the 2021 edition, it required all new and existing buildings to maintain a, rate, a minimum radio signal strength for emergency services and to maintain it at a level determined by the AHJ. What we see now is that new and existing systems need to have an approved emergency responder communication enhancement system if the minimum radio signal strength cannot be maintained in uh, accordance with NFPA 1225. Now, NFPA 1225s is the standard for um, emergency responder communication services. And that provides some requirements for what these systems uh, need to provide or what level of communication um, signal strength needs to be available within these buildings for these first responders. Now, if we look at the enhanced content here, we see chapter 18 of 1225 is going to cover the, the ERCES or ERCES systems. And basically, the, minim, the requirement here is that we need to be able to provide a delivered audio quality. Now, delivered audio quality is basically a way of measuring a signal strength, but basically measuring you know the output of the signal. Instead of trying to measure how strong the signal is, we're looking at basically what that signal uh, can create. Um, and we can see here as an example of what that, those different delivered audio, um, delivered audio qualities are. Like a five is gonna be, everything is easily understood, right? We can go all the way down to a level one where it's, it's unusable. I can't even present any speech in there or anything is um, unreadable, right? So that's how I'm measuring what my delivered audio quality is. And I, everything's gotta be above a three. Now, how much of the space and then what spaces need to have that three? At 18.1 of 1225 says that I've got to be within that acceptable range, so above that 3.0 in 99% of the floor area in critical spaces and 95% of the area in general areas. Now, critical spaces are going to be fire command centers, fire pump rooms, exit stairs, um, elevators, and standpipe connections. Those are some examples. And that's basically, those are spaces that the, you know, the first responders need to be and need to be able to communicate in. Um, so I hope this provides a little bit of insight into, you know, some of what are those requirements that we're seeing for emergency responder communication enhancement systems, some recent changes in the fire code that might require a lot more testing to be done to make sure that an available radio signal or um, delivered audio quality is provided within these spaces. Um, and again, a lot of it is in, in 1225. I highly recommend going and taking a look at chapter 20, which provides a lot more requirements uh, between chapter 20 and chapter 18. Chapter 20 goes a lot into detail about how you need to test a specific building. If you wanna learn more on how you can use NFPA Link to go through all those requirements or help you at your job that you're doing, go ahead and go to www.nfpa.org link.